Welcome to PALS. It's Professor Anyamu's Anatomy Lecture Series. We will continue with our lecture on muscles around the pectoral giddle. We'll be looking at the levator scapula. Now, from what we have here, this is the, this is the medial border of the scapula. And this is the infraspinous fossa. That's the supraspinous fossa with the muscles, supraspinatus, infraspinatus. So this is the medial border. So this is actually the muscle we are interested in. That's the levator scapula. Now, levator scapula picked origin from the region of the neck. Now, it's a slender muscle. It runs from the neck. This is, this is a smaller diagram showing the origin. Now, this muscle picks origin from the upper four cervical vertebra. Upper four cervical vertebra. And um, that's origin. C1 to C4. That is the origin right, from C1 to C4. In this C1 to C4, between C1 and C2, that is atlas and axis, it picks origin from the transverse processes. The origin is from the transverse processes. For C3 and C4, the origin is also from transverse processes, but from the posterior tubercle of the transverse processes. So if we say that it picks origin from the transverse processes of C1 to C4, that's still okay. You can also give more information. Now let's look at the insertion. It picks origin from this upper part and then runs diagonally down to its insertion. And as we can notice, it runs to the, to the medial border of the, of the scapula towards the dorsal surface. In that area, it inserts on the point between the superior angle of the scapula to the point of the scapula, to the upper point of the root of the spine. This section is the root of the spine. So the levator scapula is set on the medial border of the scapula from the superior angle to the upper part of the root of spine. In its innervation, this, this muscle is special because it is going to be getting innervation from two plexuses, one from the cervical plexus, two from the brachial plexus. Now, it is innervated from C3 and C4 cervical nerves, and they are from cervical plexus. It is also takes innervation from C5, and this C5 is from brachial plexus, and then this actually the innervation called the dorsal scapular nerve. Dorsal scapular nerve. So the levator scapula picks or gets innervation from C3, C4, which are branches from the cervical plexus, and then from C5, which is a dorsal scapular nerve, which is a branch from the brachial plexus, one of the supraclavicular branches of brachial plexus. Another name for this dorsal scapular nerve is the nerve to the rhomboids. Now, what is the action of this muscle? This muscle, from the name, is an elevator. It elevates, the, it elevates the scapula from its origin. It elevates the scapula. It elevates the scapula. Also, it, it, it rotates the scapula. It rotates the scapula downwards. By the time it pulls here, the scapula goes down. So it is involved in, uh, uh, in downward rotation of the scapula. And finally, it is it's a lateral flexor of the neck. When the attachment on the clavicle is fixed, it can flex the neck, either laterally towards the right or laterally towards the left. So these three actions are the actions carried out by levator scapula. First of all, it's elevation of the neck. Second, it's, in, it's a downward rotation of the scapula. And third, a lateral flexor of the neck. So the next muscle we'll be looking at will be the rhomboids. Now the rhomboids are also 
the, some, some of the muscles we see are the medial aspect of the scapula. There are some rectangular muscles we see running from the neck to the scapula. There are two. We have the major and then the minor. The minor is above the major. These are the muscles. This is, to, this is a cut edge of rhomboids minor, and this is the cut edge of rhomboids major. Now let's start with the origin. Now, the, the rhomboids minor peaks origin from two processes. It peaks origin from the spines of one, the C7 cervical vertebra, and the T1 thoracic vertebra, and also the terminal part of ligament, ligamentum nocca. So it picked origin from the, the, this vertebra and then the ligamentum nocca. It runs diagonally towards the posterior surface of the medial border of the scapula, and then at the point of the root of spine, below the insertion of levator scapula, the rhomboid minor is set on that portion of the scapula. Now, the root of spine is, this, is that part of the medial aspect of scapula where the spine actually took off from. Now, we'll take the, we'll take the major. Now, for rhomboid major, it also peaks origin from the neck region. Now, we see it peaking origin from the spines of the of second thoracic vertebra to the fifth thoracic vertebra, that is four, four vertebra. It also runs diagonally downwards and then towards the same posterior aspect of the medial border of the scapula. The rhomboid major is about twice the size of um, rhomboid minor. So what we see here is it insertion from the lower aspect of the the root of spine to the, the, to the inferior angle of the scapula. So we have these muscles along the medial border of the scapula. Now, both, are involved, both do the same action. What is the action? They're involved in retraction. They're involved in retraction of the scapula. They pull the scapula medially. They pull the scapula medially. Also, in, in, alongside, alongside the levator scapula, they also, when they pull, they, when, they pull when they move up, they bring about the downward displacement of the scapula, downward rotation of the scapula. Now we look at the nerve supply. The nerve supply is actually the dosal scapula nerve. The, that's the C5. It's also called the the nerve to the rhomboids. So the same nerve supplies both the levator scapula, that's the scapula nerve, the rhomboid minor and rhomboid major. So rhomboid, uh, nerve to rhomboid or the scapula nerve supplies both rhomboid major and minor. That's all we take for the rhomboids, thank you. The next muscle we'll be looking at will be the supraspinatus. Now, before we start taking the supraspinatus, it would be nice to, to let us know about some four muscles that help in uh, stabilizing the shoulder joints. So we call those muscles the rotator cuff muscles. Those muscles are four. We call them the seat muscles, seats. First one is the supraspinatus. Second is the infraspinatus. Third is the teres minor, and the fourth is the subscapularis. So these four muscles, called seat muscles, form a cuff around the head of the humerus. And the cuff actually helps to stabilize the shoulder joint. So we'll be taking, we'll be considering these four muscles alongside the rest of the muscles that are seen around the pectoral region. So we will first start with the supraspinatus. The supraspinatus is the muscle found in the supraspinous fossa. It picks origin from medial to third of this 
supraspinous fossa, and then get inserted into the greater tubercle. Now, the greater tubercle has three facets. Those facets are the superior facet, the middle facet, and the inferior facet. Now, if we look up here, we'll be seeing the superior facet. And the superior facet of the, of the greater tubercle of the humerus is where the supraspinatus inserts. So that is, the, this is the cut edge from our diagram. This is the cut edge of supraspinatus, and that's the cut edge where we're seeing the insertion. Now, the nerve supply to the supraspinatus is the suprascapular nerve. If we can recall, the suprascapular nerve is the branch from the brachial plexus, from the upper trunk of brachial plexus. The function of supraspinatus is actually very important in abduction of the shoulder joint. First, the supraspinatus initiates abduction, initiates abduction before it's taken over by some other muscles like the deltoid muscle. So what we notice is that supraspinatus initiates the abduction, the first zero to 15 degrees abduction. At that point, it will be easy for deltoid muscle to take it over. Number two, supraspinatus is the only rotator cuff muscle that is not involved in rotation. It's important to know that because a number of times people fall prey to that is a rotator cuff muscle, yes, but by virtue of where it is, it's not actually involved in rotation. The rotation is actually left for the other three rotator cuff muscles. Now, something that supraspinatus does, which we, we, that also needs to mention, the virtue of its uh, cause, it helps to fix, hold the head of the humerus strongly on the glenoid fossa while the action of abduction is taking place.